Hello, thanks a ton for joining me. Now, in the last episode, we talked about Arduino Shields. In this episode, we're going to talk about something similar, the breakout board. Now, you might think, as I first did when I heard about breakout boards, is that they were some type of fixture for practicing your kung fu fighting. But in this video, we're going to discuss what breakout boards actually are, how they can accelerate your Arduino prototyping, and some things to look out for when you buy them. The basic concept of a breakout board is that it takes a single electrical component and makes it easy to use. So usually the electrical component is an integrated circuit. Now integrated circuits, as you may know, have pins on them. And the pins on an integrated circuit can do a multitude of things. But you know, you'll have some pins for supply power and pins for providing a ground, pins for receiving inputs and pins for sending outputs, that type of thing. A breakout board breaks out these pins onto its own printed circuit board. And then the printed circuit board has its own pins that are spaced perfectly for a solderless breadboard, giving you easy access to use the integrated circuit. Now, there's all types of breakout boards, but most of them are for different types of sensors. For example, accelerometers, ultrasonic distance sensors, RFID tag sensors, temperature sensors, pressure sensors. They even have a Mismic breakout board for sensing dinosaur footsteps. Now you might be wondering what the difference is between a breakout board and an Arduino shield. And that's a good question. Breakout boards usually have a smaller form factor, so they don't need to fit the entire space of an Arduino shield to accomplish their mission. And while the market for most breakout boards is being driven because of their use with Arduino, since the pinout of a breakout board is not designed specifically to the Arduino headers, it means that you could use a breakout board with any other microcontroller development board you would want. So it gives a breakout board a little bit more versatility than an Arduino shield. Since breakout boards generally have fewer components than a shield does, you may find that the cost is lower for a breakout board than a comparable Arduino shield. And as you may have guessed by now, you can find a breakout board that does essentially the same thing as an Arduino shield might. Now you might be wondering, if breakout boards only have a few components, why not just buy those components and put them on a breadboard yourself? Especially since the components themselves are cheaper than it would cost for the breakout board, at least in most cases. Well, that's a great question. And there's nothing saying that you can't do that, and a lot of people do. So why the heck are people buying all these breakout boards? Well, essentially, it comes down to convenience. So let me list the ways that a breakout board can help you out, and then you kind of make the call for yourself. We've already said that breakout boards use integrated circuits. Now, integrated circuits are kind of like t-shirts. You can get them in all different sizes. And usually, breakout boards utilize a tiny version of the integrated circuit called an SMD, or surface mount device. Now the pins on SMD parts are really small. It's not something that you can really easily pop in into a breadboard. Now the larger form factor of an integrated circuit, called a DIP or dual inline package, they've got bigger pins and you can easily fit those into a breadboard. But the DIP package of an integrated circuit will be bigger than the SMD form factor. So the point I'm trying to get to here is that a breakout board can sometimes save you space which may or may not be something important for your project. Another thing that breakout boards allow you to do is reuse. You can reuse that breakout board in a ton of different things because it's got these heavy duty pins. You can just kind of put it in, pull it out of the breadboard. You're really not worried about bending the pins too much. But if you're going to use a dip package and breadboard the components yourself, the dip packages, yes, they do fit into a breadboard, the pins do, but they're just not as heavy duty and they're not necessarily designed to be plugged in and pulled out all the time. So they have a usable lifespan. The other issue you may find is that the dip version of an integrated circuit is not available. Because, you know, as electronics get smaller over time, the demand for larger components like dips is drying up. So manufacturers are moving away from even bothering with the dip package of an integrated circuit they might make. Ultimately, this brings you back to that breakout board form factor, especially if you're going to be doing rapid prototyping with an Arduino and a breadboard and that type of thing. One great feature of breakout boards is that they usually have the pin names of the integrated circuit labeled right on the PCB. So this makes hooking up the breakout board to your Arduino a cinch. 
especially when there's a ton of pins. Otherwise, what you end up doing is you're looking at that black box of an integrated circuit and you're referencing the data sheet of the integrated circuit to try to figure out which pin is for what. So now that we've talked about a couple of the benefits, you know, the convenience factor that a breakout board provides, let's talk about a couple things you might want to consider when you're buying them. Now you heard me say this about Arduino shields in the last episode, but I'll say it again. Good documentation is like water in the desert. The more you can get your hands on, the better. I mean, let's face it, a lot of this electronics and programming stuff is just simply not intuitive. So you, you really want to have good instructions and reference material if you're going to make it work right. So the test I usually use before buying a breakout board is to see what reference material I can find online for. If nothing tangible exists, then I might be spending a lot more time trying to get it up and running than I'd really prefer to. Now as you search for a particular breakout board, you may find that there is a super cheap version of it available. Now if you plan on using pre-existing code for the breakout board, maybe you found some sketch and it says, hey, use this code with XYZ breakout board. You know, but that breakout board's expensive, but you can kind of find a cheap version of it. So what you want to make sure before you buy that cheap version is that the breakout boards are using the same integrated circuit, or at least the same family of integrated circuit. Because what can happen is two integrated circuits can have vastly different pinouts and they can have different ways of operating. So the code written for one IC very well is not going to be written for another IC even if they're doing the same thing. So if they don't use the same IC and you don't know how to adjust the code for those differences then you may find that the cheap version will cost you more time trying to figure out how to use it. Just like Arduino shields many breakout boards are sold as kits but usually the only thing you have to solder are the header pins that allow the PCB to plug into the breadboard. So this is really easy to do. Now it may also be the case that a kit maker just sells the breakout board with the SMD components attached and then you'll have to buy the pin headers separately. So those are just a few things to keep in mind when you're buying a breakout board. Finally, once you actually have your breakout board, make sure you know what voltage supply pin it needs hooked up to. The Arduino has two voltage out pins, one at 3.3 volts and one at 5 volts. Now many breakout boards will use a supply voltage around 3.3 volts. Sometimes the supply voltage will be printed right on the PCB by the associated pin. But other times it will just say VCC. So you'll want to check the specs of the breakout board. Now if you're just getting started with breakout boards, a great place to start is in the Arduino IDE examples. Some pre-written sketches can get you up and running quick with some really common breakout boards. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you have an idea of what a breakout board is now and some things to consider when buying them and the convenience that they can provide for you. If you like this style of lesson and you're learning about Arduino, I highly recommend you check out the Open Source Hardware Group website. I've actually got two courses there that can get you up and running fast with Arduino. One is a free course that you cannot sign up for and one is a paid course. Both of them, again, kind of give you a jump start into your Arduino learning. Well, thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you have a wonderful week. In next week's episode, we're going to be talking about a specific Arduino shield that I think is pretty cool. All right, I'll see you then. Bye. Thank you.